Uh, so I got the electrician here. Just put in a what's it? A 60 amp. 60 panel. amp panel. Yeah. And with a uh, plug over here, I don't think you can see it from my lathe, and a plug here for the air compressor, which is going to hide behind the um, the machine, and then a 240 volt plug for the machine, and a 120 volt plug for the uh, CNC computer and all that stuff. Um, is there anything special that you have to do for this machine or for the plugs? Well, for the CNC and the machines always by itself, it's 240 volt, 20 amp feed, and then you need 120 volt to run the computer. So you put those on separate circuits. Okay. So it pretty much boils it. Perfect. And uh, what sort of plug, like wiring, did the machine have? Like for what? Like it was two wire. It's a two hot and the ground. So okay. it's just a 240 volt system. Okay. Single phase. Single phase, yeah. Yep. Pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah. And now I finally have more power in my garage, which I've been wanting for a long time. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. You have a good day. You too, buddy. No so Eric just uh, installed the power draw bar. Tell us what you did. Well, I did what the instructions told me to do, and um... <clears throat> it came with pretty good instructions for the draw bar. You know, lots of pictures, lots of explanation. All right. All right, so did everything you told me to. Um, the machine was already kind of set up for some of it, but basically I had to take some things out, put in, I don't even know the term anymore. Um, but all in all, there's some wiggle room. Don't know why that is, and um, don't really like that. Yeah, it's actually hitting the motor. Um, it's got to be able to move up and down just a little bit because um, if you can see this like you can see the pulley spinning this thing spins so there has to be clearance room between here and here and uh, I don't know I just that's weird I can't see any other way that it's supposed to go on um, so we'll have to ask Tormac or something but or maybe it'll work. Or maybe it'll just work. Who knows? Uh, up here, this panel is new. Uh, that's part of the drawbar. This is your air solenoid. And uh, it comes with a... comes with a little switchy thing. I'm pretty sure this is your on-off switch for the power drawbar. Um, but we also got the foot pedal set up. So that'll be much handier. Um, and then it's got this cool... Uh, what are these called? J-Flow? Anyway, it's got this thing with two air hoses that basically go in here to the cylinder. So we'll hook that up. It's got a wiring plug that gives a power to do all this stuff. Next up we have the machine electronics. It's got a very nice uh, case there. Very well laid out, very professional. I mean, this is how it should be done. It's not done by an amateur like me. Mine are kind of hilarious looking. Um, but this is where all the magic happens. You've got your stepper drivers here. You've got a transformer and a transformer. This is the VFD for the spindle. Um, controls the speed of the spindle. Take this off. We didn't do it together. Yeah, this was mine. <laughs> um, so for the power drawbar, I had to add these two wires at the bottom, and the instructions clearly tell you how to do it quite easy. Another thing with the power drawbar is these instructions were probably written 9-26-2011, uh, not that long ago. But um, it says in various places, you know, drill a hole here, tap a hole here, just for a few things, little brackets like this thing. Um, but our machine already came pre-configured for that, so they must have changed their assembly line a little bit. And this hole up here. And the motor. Oh yeah, and the motor. It says to rotate the motor 90 degrees, but ours was already rotated that way. Um, so <laughs> Eric spent like 45 minutes unbolting the motor, rotating it, and going, wait a minute, this is already right. So that was hilarious to watch him. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and this is the two air hoses. One's labeled top and bottom. Here's top and bottom. Very clear. They, they did a really good job. Uh, Except for this. I don't know what's going on there. John is back here. 
wiring up the computer and doing all stuff that needs to be done. Got our new electrical outlets. And he's just saying how glad he is that we put a good two feet of room behind the machine so we can... You didn't see that. <laughs> we can fart around back there. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, 26 inches or so? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Technically, you only need like the 8 inches to get the motor back here, but come on, this is nice. Yeah. Just to be able to walk back here, this is where your plugs are. I mean, our electrician was kind of a big guy, and he was able to get back here and do all that. Yeah. And it does take up more shop room that way, but this but shop's 20 by 20. And the only other thing we really need space for is anodizing and maybe working on a car every once in a while. Oh yeah, but there's tons of room to get a car in here. Yeah. So we got everything wired up, plugged in, turned on. Um, Eric's just installing the program and license and all that. And um, just for fun, we put the machine into manual mode, turned on the spindle, it turns on, sounds great. And... Reset. It moves. All right. So today I am filling the coolant for the Tormach. Um, just filling a little container with eight ounces of the coolant, and then adding, you know, twenty parts water along with that. Um, here we go. And I figure dumping it in here is the best way to fill it. We couldn't see any other option, so this is what we're doing. One. How many of those you put in? Uh, ten of these. Ten of those, yeah. Uh, Sixteen ounces. ounces, yeah. Two. Yes, it comes with this synthetic coolant, and it's quite watery actually, and compared to the coolant that I've been used to, it's a little thicker. Uh, so speaking of cooling and lubricants, we've also got the automatic oiler down here, which was conveniently already plumbed up, but I mean we had to attach it to the side and wire it and stuff. But that stainless steel uh, hose is already hooked up. So we've got to put oil in there and it's automatic so it'll be, we can set it to give a squirt of oil to all the ways and all the moving parts every so often intervals. I think the manual said four hours, so we do that. But yeah, we're having all kinds of fun getting this thing all uh, set up and moving around. Got the pendant to work. Um, it didn't work when I first plugged it in, but then once I restarted the computer, the next day it worked just fine. Hard to do this one more. So that controls the Z. You can go really slow, you can go really fast. You can also go step by step. Like the really TV cool show? Stuff. Like the TV show. <laughs>